Hi, uh, good evening. Um, I'm Kai Larsen. I'm uh, primarily a Norwegian. Secondarily, I'm a husband, father, and a, an academic gambler. I want to accomplish one thing in my life. I want to find the one thing that no one has seen before. Uh, unfortunately, that's really weird stuff, so I'm not going to talk about that today. But I will share with you my experience in 20 years of developing AI and language models and what it makes me think about what's going on right now. I wanted to share with you six implications of AI that may be a little deeper, a little bit more scary. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong about everything. Number one, it is not paranoia if someone's out to get you. Now, we know that organizations are collecting data about us and have been for decades a lot of data about us. So far, they have struggled to put all of those pieces together. But we're now starting to get there in terms of tools that are capable of combining all of this information into one picture of who we really are. Take a look at this list of organizations that I bet you heard of a lot of them. Um, can you help me remember the name of the last organization that has these three pieces that are necessary to really figure out who we are? Anyone? Apple is definitely missing. Okay. I shouldn't be mad. IBM is pretty awesome. Don't get me wrong. They struggled a lot with the AI era. Uh, what's another one? The NSA. Wait, what? The government? But we have laws that say they can't collect information about us. In Utah. That's right. The biggest hard drive in the world, pretty much, in the desert of Utah just storing information about us. They're not allowed to look at it until they need it, but that's how they interpret the law, right? So my favorite is actually on this list is Amazon. They're about to come out with Rufus. They started rolling that out, looking at all of our purchases, all of our reviews, everything. Should be interesting to see what they actually share with us and what they use behind closed doors about us. X or Twitter, I think, is going to be a big one. They, they're the only place that has up-to-date information about what's going on in the world when something goes wrong. No one else can do it. When there's a wildfire in Colorado, where do you go? Where's the only way to get a sense of what's actually going on as it's going on? Twitter or X, right? That's going to be huge. And then, of course, NSA, right? Implication number two. We have stopped evolving. As a human being, it takes 20 years for me to procreate. I looked really hard, found myself a really smart wife, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, put her through school, neurosurgeon now, all of that, right? Um, and then we had kids, and that kid is smarter than me, for sure. So moving forward, right, but 20 years, are you kidding me? We can't wait for that. It's basically flat for the humanity. And the kind of numbers that we're going to see um, for machines in terms of speed, and we're finding out that speed is really important. Speed is really important now that software is catching up. So what is going to happen? We don't know. We just know that they are going to be able to process things much faster than all the human brains put together. And that's not going to be the end of it. What does it mean? Don't know. Machine ethics are not like human ethics. If you look at how, for example, or everyone's favorite chat GPT was created, right? Basically, they took a bunch of text, lots of billions and billions of documents, put it through training, training, and training, 
for months and months and months until it understood how words belong together. How, how, which words are similar to which is not a whole lot more than that. And then they realized, well, we can make it spit up a out answers to questions, but they're not very good answers. So they added this additional step where they had human beings train the algorithm to provide better answers. Well, what do you think was the problem still? Bias was still in there. What else? Costly for sure. Uh, this costs a lot of money. This costs a lot of money. But what's still happening? That algorithm is a bastard. Holy moly, is that algorithm terrible? If you give it half a chance, it's going to take conversations between human beings that it's learned the language of. You start down the wrong path with one of these algorithms, and it will threaten your life. It will actually tell you it's going to show up at your home and basically destroy, destroy your knees, something that it takes me a lot of biking to do otherwise. Right? So we added safety blocks, trying to make sure it does not threaten people too much and isn't too biased, etc. But guess what? Those who don't care about this part have a huge advantage. Let's talk about this issue with, uh, where Uber shuts down a whole division just because one human being died, right? That's the right thing to do. Do you think if China starts to build AI into let me not use China. Let me use an example of some random dictatorship that is monitoring all its uh, citizens. And let's say one of them die because of AI. Are they gonna be like, hmm, we should stop doing this. This is quite problematic, people are dying. Of course they're not, it's not an issue to them. Anyone follow? This person, right? How awesome is Taylor Swift, right? So is this AI generated, you think? Who thinks it's AI generated? Have you heard what AI did to her? I bet you all have heard what AI did to her, right? It's really uh, some terrible person who did it, right? But the tools are there. This is actually her from an award ceremony. It's a real picture. I would not dare to bring a fake picture of Taylor Swift. I cannot solve the big problems. It can't. It just can't. It's never going to be able to. And guess what? It's because of human problems. Why can't they solve it? Well, they can solve it, but we don't want them to, right? Because the only way to solve it is take the human out of the equation, right? So we cannot get it to solve this. I'll give you an example. You don't have to walk too far off Pearl Street to see this, right? It's everywhere in our country right now. Homelessness everywhere. According to the latest numbers, 650,000 Americans are homeless right now. Think about that. Could we solve that if we wanted to, you think? Right now, Congress is talking about, should we send $80 billion to Ukraine and Israel? Right? They think they can afford it. It's just a political decision. Do they want to? Take that money, and I'm not saying you shouldn't send that money where they want to send it. I have no opinion on that. But take $80 billion and use it on homelessness. That's $113,000 per homeless person in the U.S. I'm not saying that will solve the problem, but it certainly would be a first step, good step, right? We could solve it ourselves. AI cannot solve this for us. However, AI can solve small problems. It can help us get to self-driving cars, hopefully ones that won't kill us too often. 
right? Um, it can fix love. I mean, it can, we can create now robots that feel like a human being for some people. Most of us will probably still want our wife, at least I do. Um, but some people will be happy with this sort of fake love. We can do healthcare diagnostics. We're getting better at that. Traffic management, supply chain. We'll talk more about education later. It can be automated really well. We haven't gotten there yet, but we will. Finally, AI itself may create problems that are beyond our reckoning. Right now, right now, 70% of all humans in this world live in a dictatorship. 70%. This is increasing. This is one of the fastest increasing numbers in the world when it comes to how political trends are changing. Why? Probably because technology is making it so easy to control people. AI will help that. It will only be easier to get people under control. First, you need to grab political control. Then you need to implement tech. And then you need to put AI on top of that. And it gets much easier. Can someone help me? Last question of the night. What's the name of that billionaire again? No. No, I don't think he's ever done that. What is that? I don't think there's such a billionaire out there. Reality is, any billionaire who tried to take over for all the jobs that are going to go away would go bankrupt within a year. There is no solution there. Are these jobs going away? They absolutely are. Are they going to be replaced? We don't know. That's the part we don't know the answer to. We know they're going away. We just don't know whether they're going to be replaced with something else or not. The typical example you'll hear is something like the um, horse whip creator or the person who made saddles, right? Yes, they went away with a car, but guess what? Lots of new jobs opened up. But did that person get those jobs? That's not so clear. So I'd say in conclusion, uh, we're not yet at the need for some kind of a war against the thinking machines. But it might be needed in a hundred years, a thousand years, we will see. Um, machines will likely not be any more evil than the humans who yield them yet. And all will probably be well for the foreseeable future. So thank you all very much.